For the last seven years, I've been traveling America in a tiny home on wheels. And for the last seven days, I've been camped out on public lands in Eastern California. I'm helping some friends build out their off-grid electrical systems. And today, I'm gonna show you guys my process for installing a 24 volt battery bank. And I'd like to thank LI Time for providing the batteries to make this video possible. Good morning, my friends. Coming to you from an overcast, chilly morning in very, very far Eastern California. Temperature check, 58 degrees outside, 60 degrees inside. It's quite a change from the last couple of days we had. It's been warm and sunny up into the 80s during the day, but we had a cold front roll in, and so it's a little bit different today. But it's still beautiful out here in the desert. All kinds of little bushes and a few trees. It's a very green spot, all things considered. I'm going to be working on Sir on Dave's box truck today. We're going to be installing a set of li time 24 volt batteries a lot of folks have been asking about electrical which batteries to use why do i use 12 volt batteries for a 24 volt system shouldn't you use 24 volt batteries these are all good questions we're going to cover that today while i do a little building share a little information with you folks but first i think we're going to make the morning espresso Here we are, the latte with the foam on top, the whipped milk. Oh, it's so good. Here's a little shot of camp. For those of you that haven't seen it yet, of course my rig Jason's two rigs, the NPR, the Fuso, Scott's 17 foot Econo line, 18 foot Econo line, Sir on Dave's 16 foot Kodiak, and his 15 foot U Haul. Jason is in the process of converting this 18 foot Isuzu NPR while he's living in a 16 foot Mitsubishi Fuso. He's running a 12 volt electrical system with a single 12 volt 400 amp hour lithium. Scott wanted some massive energy storage because he plans to run an electric water heater as well as an air conditioner. So he went with two 24 volt, 230 amp hour batteries, which will store over 11,000 watt hours of energy. On the roof, he has 2,200 watts of solar to keep these babies charged up. And then the project we're gonna work on right now is Sir on Dave's 16 foot Kodiak. Here's the batteries we're gonna be putting in Dave's rig. This is the LI Time. Technically, it's a 25.6 volt, 100 amp hour. This is their smart uh, Bluetooth 5.0 battery pack. So we'll be able to connect with this battery via the app, check the voltages and the current and some other pretty cool stuff. So I'll show you guys how that works. Um, but first, I gotta carry these over. We'll get them over into Dave's rig and then we'll set them up. So one nice thing about the 100 amp hour, 25 volt, is that it's pretty lightweight, pretty manageable. Uh, pretty much anyone can just carry this around. So if you're gonna be doing a DIY install, uh, this is a pretty good battery choice that you can easily maneuver on your own. Let's roll, Dave. We're back in Dave's box truck. He has decided to install his electrical inside of an L-shaped bench seat. And so we have the bottom piece of wood for that bench. And the first thing we're doing is laying out all the components to see where everything's gonna fit. And we wanna keep in mind that the batteries should be close together so that the cables that connect them are as short as possible for maximum efficiency. So here's the preliminary configuration that we came up with. We have a pair of the LI Time 25.6 volt, 100 amp hour smart edition batteries. And then over here, we have a single 
um, 25.6 volt, 200 amp hour LI time battery. And so all combined together, he's gonna be cooking with over 10,000 watt hours of juice. And so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead now and attach the battery hold down straps to secure the batteries in place. And then we're gonna wire everything together. He's wanting to put his all-in-one inverter charger right next to it. And then over here, we're gonna have uh, a setup for his bus bars, his Victron shunt, his step down converter and a couple other goodies. So overall looking pretty good. Uh, and he's actually planning some big things for this build. He's gonna have, you know, a regular bench back here, but then he's gonna have like plexiglass view windows on the side uh, with some LED lighting inside. It's gonna look really cool. And so when you look through the view window, you're gonna be able to see um, the label on that LI time battery. It's a really sharp looking label. I'm liking the orange and black. And um, this is kind of the new updated design of their logo. It looks pretty good. So it's definitely gonna be a cool feature to look in, see these batteries glowing with an LED. I'm excited about it. We completed the first step of installing a battery bank, which is planning the location. Step number two is securing the battery. I'm using a set of 72 inch Iaport battery straps. For the strongest connection, I'm pre-drilling the holes, snugging down the screws with a power drill, then finishing off with a screwdriver to make sure I don't over or under tighten the hardware. Once the hardware is secured, we pull the straps tight. I'm trimming off the excess length and then using a zip tie to secure the tails in place. So we got the batteries all secured down with the battery straps. Looking good, looking solid. The next step is gonna be to connect these three batteries in parallel. We're gonna run from the ground over to this battery down to this battery and uh, on the positive we'll go from here to here to here and we're going to take a positive from here into the bus bar and then a negative from here into the bus bar that way the battery bank is balanced and we're pulling current through the entire bank so that's going to be the next step we got a set of one aught we're going with one aught power and ground cable so we're going to get that cut to length stripped crimped heat shrunk in place so I've measured the length of wire. We're gonna be using this right here. And I have this set of ratcheting battery cable cutters, super heavy duty. They work great. Uh, all the way up to four aught battery cable. They cut it, cut through it like a breeze. There we go. And then I have this rotating insulation cutter. Thing works pretty good. So we're just gonna drop the one knot cable right inside, give it a spin, and then we'll pop the uh, end right off. And we have a one aught 5 16 ring terminal. That'll be the proper size for the battery posts. And we'll be using this Temco Industrial Dialys Hydraulic Cable Crimper. It's pretty cool. It works for any, basically any size ring terminal you need. Uh, you can just adjust the size up top, lock it in, make the connection. There we are, and then I always give it a give it a quick tug, make sure it doesn't budge. It's solid. So then the next step, we're gonna use some heat shrink. This is the good stuff. It has adhesive built into it. So as you run the heat gun, the adhesive melts and it just locks everything into place, creates a watertight connection. So that's it, that is one side of the cable completed. Now I gotta do the same thing for the other side. And then we gotta do that uh, six times and then we'll have this battery bank connected. Let's make it happen. So we ended up adding some custom wire loom to the one aught battery cables. Dave went and got some pretty nice uh, red and black for the positive and then black for the negative. It just gives everything a nice finish, uh, kind of dresses up the batteries and I'm a big fan.
So here it is. The three LI Time batteries are installed, strapped down to the wooden base. And then we have them all connected together in parallel, positive to positive, negative to negative. The battery bank is completely wired, but there is still additional steps from the battery bank to incorporate it into the rest of the system. So what we will be doing next is taking a negative lead from this battery and bringing it down into the shunt, into the negative bus bar, and then from the bus bar it will distribute to all the components, including the inverter charger. And then we're gonna pull a positive from this side and that's gonna come down into our primary fuse, into our on-off disconnect switch, and then into the positive bus bar, then that will distribute to all the components. So that's gonna be a step for next time. In the meantime, we're just gonna let these batteries balance out. Appreciate the good work. It looks really good with this wire loom. It kind of dresses it up nice. Uh, gives the positive and negative wires just a little more premium look. So I typically recommend 24 volt electrical systems, uh, especially for bigger vehicles like box trucks and school buses. So in the past, I've always used two 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries wired in series to create a 24 volt bank. And the reason I've done that is because up until about the last year, uh, 24 volt lithium iron phosphate really was not very common. Uh, the price on it was significantly higher than its 12 volt counterpart and you really couldn't find 24 volt in large capacity batteries. But ladies and gentlemen, those days are over. Uh, thanks to LI Time, we now have access to affordable 24 volt battery banks and a whole range of capacities uh, from their 100 amp hour two pack. This is a 24 volt 200 amp hour. Scott's running 24 volt 230 amp hour. And LI Time even has a 24 volt 280 amp hour lithium, which delivers over 7,000 watt hours of electricity in a single battery, which is really impressive. Another thing I like about these LI Time batteries is they have a lot of different features available depending which battery you choose. You can get low temperature shutoff protection, you can get self heating, and additionally you can get a Bluetooth compatible BMS. This is the Smart Bluetooth 5.0 battery and so with both of these we can log in directly from your smartphone and check all the specs on the battery itself. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what that looks like. So I'm on my iPhone. We're gonna, you have to download the LI Time app. We'll go ahead and open that up. And uh, we're gonna go back. I've already connected one of these batteries. This is kind of the home screen. We're gonna connect the second battery now. We'll just hit search. This other battery is a fresh battery, hasn't been added yet. So here it is. We can see the one on the bottom is brand new. We're gonna click on that, connecting. And so going through the app, you can see uh, we have two different batteries here. Uh, the top battery, you can click on it. It'll show you all the stats. We can see the battery, current state of charge is 48%. It'll show us the power draw, the current draw, um, as energy is flowing in and out of the battery bank. Additionally, it shows you the voltage and how much capacity you currently have in that battery. So this is a great way, if you don't have an advanced electrical system, this is a great way to be able to hop in from your phone and just check the state of charge on your battery. And then additionally at the bottom, uh, you can check the temperature, the cycle count, and there's a couple options down here where you can check the balance of your battery to make sure that it's proper. You can check the status of each cell and then additionally the BMS as well. So it's just kind of letting you know everything's running smoothly. I'm gonna drop a link in the description if you wanna pick up your own two pack of these 25.6 volt, 100 amp hour LI Time batteries. And please drop a comment if you have any questions about what we did today. And I hope to see you in the next video. We're gonna be having a little potluck and bonfire, maybe a movie night tonight. Uh, it's gonna be a really good time. So right now me and King, uh, Nomad King Gamer came in from San Diego. Also, Desert Runner Rick is here. And uh, so we're gonna get the fire going right now and prepare for some festivities. We got Desert Runner Rick with the charcoal grill, with some sun tea. You came prepared, my friend. Appreciate you, man. He's gonna be grilling up some brats.
So just dial that in with your, you know, with your combo square. Loose this, scoot it back, put it in, put the clamp down a little bit. You want to, you want to wet him down first? <laughs> 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 it's gonna go. There it is. Voila, flambe. Burning the Victron, Victron box to stay warm. Look at that. Let's go. Good work, King. Don't inhale the, the, the Victron box fumes. How's it looking, man? Uh, I don't want to take away from what you're doing. No, no, no. You can put them right around here. Cause... Just put them on the perimeter? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's or do it. Put, just, let's do it. I'm in. I told you my wife is the, the cook in my house. I'm just winging this. So oh, okay. Yeah. She That's cooks. what I do every day, bro. I just wing it. <laughs> she, cooks she cooks everything. So. That's nice. Nice to have a lady who cooks. Man. Absolutely. We got some rolls. We got some steak, some brats. Look at this. We got some delicious bell pepper and onion. Little bowl I made up. We got some mashed potatoes, some uh, steak chunks under the bell peppers and onion from desert runner rick we got the little pepperoni and then a brat we're watching the sunset let's go Rick's got the party lights going. Yeah. I see it, man. A little ball. I see you. A little ball. I like these orange ones, too. Those are cool. I oh, can't. you haven't seen me these guys. Before. We haven't seen them at night, bro. You were going to do them at uh, Schoolie, yeah. but it got, we got rained out. Dang. Lights up all the way over there. Your truck is right in the field. Yeah, my truck's in the field of view, but look at that. I just... Yeah. 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 Ye